directly or indirectly. State security apparatus, mainly the police and uh, other assassins, were often in the front line in the mass attacks and in the murders. Now, I, I, I broaden this because if police themselves in uniform were not said to be involved, but still state apparatus in the form of other assass assassins uh, um, associated with the state would be involved. Even other um, killers taken from various formations in the province would be co-opted or recruited or directed uh, uh, in, in, and, and, and used in these in this particular killings. By the state? By the state, by the state at that time. Towards the close of the 80s and beyond the unbending of the previously banned political organizations, including the African National Congress, the state exacerbated and fully exploited differences between the UDF COSATO Alliance and INCAT. They, they were fully conscious of the, of the existence of these formations, political formations yes. in Guazul Natal in particular. They knew the sentiments that were shared by all of them and the feelings they had about each other. And then they exacerbated the differences between them and they exploited those differences to fan the fires of violence, consciously so. When the ANC therefore was unbanned in 1990, together with other organizations, the province in almost all the four corners was already in fire. KwaZulu Natal police were now very visible as an extension of the state security machinery and highly involved in, polit in the political conflict in the province. Mr. Mkunu, you said KwaZulu Natal police perhaps? No, 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 KwaZulu police, not KwaZulu Natal. I think that is more appropriate. KwaZulu police, yes. Thank you. They, they were, by the time the ANC was unbanned, together with other organizations that had been uh, banned, they, they really were busy of building a profile in the eyes of the community, including those of us who were in the ANC, accumulating a profile of uh, involvement in the political conflict between the ANC and the IFP. As, as police, and, and that's why I talk about them as an extension of the rock security apparatus of the state, yes. that is uh, South Africa at that time. I could uh, count a few just large scale um, um, incidents of violence, like the Seven Day War uh, in Marisbeck in, in March 1990. Um, I can refer to other mass killings as well uh, in the same Midlands area in, towards the close of the 1980s. Shoba Shoba and the Massacre in 1995, I think, I think I'm correct. And the killing fields yes, of yes, Mandin. Yes, it, it was on Christmas Day, 1995. Yes, Christmas Day uh, in 1995. Uh, and, and in other words, on the 25th of December, 1995. And then the killing fields of uh, Mandini, Matambini area. 
as testimony of this kind of uh, uh, conflict in Guazul Natal. Yes. Now, let me summarize it this way for your for the benefit of the commission and, 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 and everybody interested in this. In this conflict, we in the ANC always, and I mean it, always felt we were justified in defending ourselves and our cause in the greater scheme of things. In other words, that when you when you establish uh, formations like uh, um, defense units, for instance, um, you were justified in doing so because there would be individuals, there would be families, there would be villages, there would be townships that would be targeted for, for murder or assassinations or mass killings for the unknown sympathy with the African National Congress. Mr. And Nkuno, you say as the ANC you felt justified in defending yourselves against who or against what? Against, I'm, 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 that's where I'm going. Okay, proceed, <clears throat> proceed. I want to say the state and its machinery was always the enemy against which we needed to defend ourselves. In other words, the apartheid state up to 1994 was our main enemy, and we're clear about it, very unambiguously. The state and its machinery, all of it, in whatever manifestation, it was our enemy. And maybe for the benefit of everybody else. In the ANC, the IFP was never an enemy, so to speak. We always looked beyond it. We always looked at uh, ourselves and the, and the IFP as a victim of a state-driven um, kind of conflict and resultant tension and violence. And they were doing this deliberately. And among us, among, among the cases, I think the Makuta case um, in which Malan uh, was then Minister of Defense and so on, those are some of the things that were pointers, useful pointers, to where violence was masterminded. It was, it was neither masterminded by the ANC nor the IFP, yes. even though I say KwaZulu police got their own profile through their own involvement, but they were not self-driven in this. They were driven I understand. in this kind of conflict. So, but on the other hand, the IFP from our interactions with them in meetings and so on, we got to understand that they felt that they were under attack from the UDF, they were under attack from the ANC later on, SDUs, and from COSAT. That was their feeling, and this is what we got from our interacting with them. So on our side, we felt that we were under attack from the apartheid state and its machinery using whatever they could use, including conflict between the ANC and the IFP. On the other hand, our understanding of the IFP at that time, their attitude, their utterances, it was that the ANC was their, was their uh, enemy. Um, and of course, this perception on their side, as we understood it over time, included a defense of what they perceived as their turf, yes. which was otherwise getting invaded by these other forces led by the African National Congress. And I must say, further submit that at this period, especially the close of the 80s, 
up to December 1996, there was a lot of proliferation, if I'm using the correct English word, proliferation of firearms and ammunition, distrib distribution of these of these uh, 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 apparatus uh, in the province, almost freely available. KwaZulu Natal is the only province that in the Republic of South Africa that ever received seven tons of arms and ammunition at, 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 a, at one stage, as information uh, got made available to all of us. Seven tons of arms and ammunition at one, at one point. Mr. Mikonu, uh, excuse me if I'm uh, interjecting prematurely. If you're going to deal with it, that, that's fine. Uh, who, who was distributing this, these arms, or where were they from? It was the state and its machinery. Giving it to who? It, it, it gave it to the police, and uh, I would say KwaZulu, KwaZulu police. I would say I identified para um, military kind of uh, um, um, formations that had uh, come to the fore. Any formation that would be available to them, and they knew those, information was always available uh, to them. They would uh, <coughs> distribute these this firearms in one way or the other. I, 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 it's no exaggeration to say that uh, at some point you would be very much afraid of existing firearms and ammunition than being afraid of who would carry them. You would just get terrified that there are firearms all over and anybody can lay their hands on. On, 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 on them, <clears throat> and, and you would fall victim. Now, <clears throat> I, I, I want to conclude at this particular level by saying, perhaps with uh, hindsight, one way the ANC and the IFP would have averted this heavy conflict during which the province lost and families lost their loved ones, numbering thousands. Never mind how many times we pointed fingers at one another. But the fact of the matter is that there was blood and bodies in this province. So I'm saying the only way we could perhaps have avoided that would have been Inkosi Mangosu Tuptilis admitting that at one stage having been uh, part of the African National Congress. Because at some point he was uh, a member of the Youth League of the ANC. Yes. Perhaps it could be him admitting that he abandoned at some stage the revolutionary liberation movement for some reasons and maybe he could have stayed within the liberation movement, the revolutionary liberation movement. But also by the ANC 
admitting that perhaps more discussion, more understanding, more communication, more interaction would have worked better in terms of averting, averting what later became this conflict. If this could have been done at the end of the 1970s, at the beginning of the 80s, I think the crucial years that we lost would have been 1978, 1979, 80, 81. Those were the crucial years that we lost. If leadership at the highest level at that time, in Kosumwa and Kosutu Plelez on one hand, maybe the president of the ANC OR on the other. But I'm saying maybe there, was not, there wasn't enough time on the side of the ANC being in exile. Um, and faced with uh, a mammoth of task of driving the ship of liberation in the country. Perhaps there, was not, there wasn't enough time dedicated solely to this cause. And there wasn't space to deal with it fully. And perhaps anticipate the consequences of the non-availability of time and space to deal with this to close the gap between the ANC and that. I think with hindsight, that, that could have been the only way we could have avoid, uh, averted. This thing which uh, liberals termed black on black uh, violence, uh, which we in the ANC don't accept as a, as a proper um, definition of what happened in the 80s and the 90s. By that point, Mr. Mkonu, am I understanding you correctly? You as the ANC are not accepting that if you look beyond the foot soldiers who are perpetrating the violence. In other words, you are saying, no, not black on black, given that the state machinery and its apparatus was behind it. <clears throat> we, the, the, the ANC exists today in KZN. The IFP still exists in KZN. Yes. We could still be fighting. We could still be fighting if we were fighting on our own, ordinarily. I, I understand you. But it, 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 we argue and, and, and will always argue and, and even submit evidence if need be, that the apartheid state and its machinery yes. was on the driver's seat on this conflict. Whether it got through the IFP or, 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 or through any other means, uh, you know the story about Askaris, um, you know the story about uh, um, other uh, police operators, and so on. So we, we argue our point from that, 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 that point of view. Yes. And, 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 but I'm saying, apart from that, if, if, if there had been clear anticipation, time allowing, the environment allowing, both for the ANC and the IFP, the ANC operating from exile, driving its, its, its core mission, which was uh, the liberation uh, war, or in other words, the liberation struggle yes. and, the, and the fight for freedom. That was the focus. Um, but if there was space and time and a, and a conducive environment, perhaps there could have been more discussion, more interaction, um, and, and more of the discussion even at the highest level, uh, if there was full anticipation of what lay ahead between the ANC and the, and the IFP. And this could have affected uh, a blood, uh, the bloodshed that we saw in the 80s and uh, in, in the first uh, um, five years of uh, the 1990s. Yeah, your point is clear, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. That's my introduction and background.
I now need to move to, the, to 2011. Yes. All right. I just want to say in passing, from the beginning of 1997, though, up to 2011, political killing remarkably decreased, searching only around particular periods, that is during general election, during local government election. So whenever you had the election during the campaign and up to the day, we, there would be a, a surge of, of violence. Otherwise, up to December 1996, the so-called political violence uh, really subsided, yes. uh, including in the hot spots, if I could use that particular word. I then make a point that says peace processes involving political parties, churches, non-government organizations, and prominent individuals in our province and elsewhere played an important role in changing the situation for the better. That is from 1996 or even from 1994 onwards. There has, however, never been any organized big dialogue to intensify and consolidate peace involving the same people. And I say, I think this is an unfortunate omission up to now. We could, from 1994 or even from 1996 or even later, have said, we still need maybe a bi-yearly, a bi-annual kind of gathering, maybe two days at a time where we meet as role players, various role players in the province, dialogue with an objective of intensifying a, a peace intensifying understanding, consolidating uh, and broadening understanding of democracy in our province using that past, past experience and uh, infusing this into the new generation and, and actually taking on board everybody throughout our province and dialogue. Instead, we, 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 what we do now is every time there's going to be elections, we form some committee yes. um, um, of, of, of political parties under government, and then we monitor violence and, and, and so on. Uh, this is reaction, uh, reacting only yes. to what would have happened uh, in the past or in that, in that particular, but there hasn't been a deliberate effort or decision on our part to say, let us, let us dialogue, let us intensify, let us create a platform, let us educate, let us uh, consolidate democracy and, 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 and broader understanding thereof. I think it's an omission. Mr. Mkunu, you, you are obviously aware that ultimately we will ask for your recommendations. Let me do this prematurely. This point you are making about the omission and the lack of proactivity, uh, which is frequent, can we record that as the commission as one of your recommendations? It's 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 one of the of of my very strong recommendations that perhaps um, the commission could consider making that um, um, at the end. It it, it really is it, something I've considered. Yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm truly making that recommendation that there be a dialogue, maybe once a year or maybe once in two years, Thank um, you. so that we, we bury deeper and deeper all these things that have happened in the past and in, 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 in their space we water the tree of peace, of of broadening understanding of the meaning of democracy and actually showcase 
the joys of democracy in our province. Yes. And, and even uh, the kind of resolving, dialoguing to resolve political differences and containing them. And affording the people of this province space where they could make regular submissions to say, this is what we've been experiencing in the past year or two, or two years. Because at times in a, in a particular given area, violence take, tend to take place over a long period with us only occasionally um, reacting and not actually coming up with something substantial in terms of resolving that. That could be a steady way and, 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 and um, um, a continuously available platform for dialoguing and taking the people of the province on board. I make that point. Thank you. Of course, I, I do, as I've made a comment, that some initiatives do get taken by government briefly from time to time around elections. And it should be noted that Kwazul Natal has never, to the best of my knowledge, had political killings free election, to the best of my knowledge. We've never had a situation where we go for a round of elections, whether local or general. And during the campaign up to the day of elections, there isn't anybody who lose their lives as a result of um, uh, political killing. So in a way I'm saying the province is still experiencing political killings during uh, uh, campaigning. Up to 1996 and during the elections campaign, political killings were mostly between parties political parties. The state, has the state now has basically disappeared as a driver of political killings, gradually from 1994 up to now. So these are the points that uh, I'm, I'm submitting. Now let's deal with political killings from, from 2011. In other words, this, this is how I, I, I close the, the gap between uh, the the periods at hand. Political killings in the province have now taken a new turn. The phenomenon is within and around the African National Congress. 